there is a gap between traditionally trained imams and contemporary young Muslims? Well, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, I'd, I'd agree with the traditional bit. Uh, traditional imams tend to not connect with young people um, as much. But I'd say that um, traditionally trained imams and contemporary young Muslims. Uh, I'd say there are, there are, it depends which imams you look at. Uh, there are imams that uh, uh, basically connect uh, with uh, young people in a, in a more friendly way and are more approachable. Certainly in my mosque, uh, I can approach my imam anytime. I mean, he approaches us at times when we go to um, prayers. He comes and says hi and any questions we have, um, we could uh, ask him. Um, but certain places I've been to um, that it would be absolutely difficult to talk to the imam or the leader uh, or the person who's got more knowledge. Um, and accessibility, I find, is, is uh, the first issue. And the second issue is, is actually connecting with the person that's been trained in front of you and understanding your world as a young person living in the UK. Uh, we need to find ways to improve dialogue and engage both parties in an accessible and realistic way. Um, well, I do think we need to find ways that um, we should improve dialogue between uh, the traditional imams and uh, the young people, uh, mainly by getting the imams to know more about the kids and the young people. Uh, once they understand the world and the situations and the everyday life that uh, the young people live in, uh, they can come up with solutions or answers to their problems easier and they can interact. Many young people young Muslims believe that they are um, negatively portrayed in the media and consequently the wider community. I think that's very true. Uh, I strongly agree with that because anytime you see a Muslim kid on the TV, uh, uh, there tends to be a, a wrong story and they're on a training camp, I don't know, they're doing something crazy, crazily wrong. Um, but you don't tend to hear about the positive stories and what uh, um, a Muslim... Uh, okay, you do hear the positive stories, but uh, you don't tend to get the name Muslims attached to the story, you see. So if it's negative, they'll definitely make sure that you know they're labelled as a Muslim thing, and they'll sell it to the people. But uh, if there is a positive story, you know, a Muslim kid has done some, something positive, they'll say that this person has done it, you know, not Muslim kid. So I think the media is a bit more selective in what they say, um, though they don't change anything, but they're more selective. So they select the negative bits and they portray that. Um, this contributes to a feeling that Britain does not value them as, in, as individuals. Um, yeah, to a certain extent it does. It, it contributes to, to um, them being isolated. I mean, it's not, it's not a fact that the people don't, you know, they, they don't... It, it's more to do with the people not understanding Islam as well once they see these things on TV. I mean, the only source of information they might have is television or... or newspaper I mean they don't go and read a book about Islam to get an idea about Muslims and stuff you know they see what's on TV and they look at a Muslim and you know they connect the two together they say oh, that's the bad guy but um, I definitely agree that you know um, it contributes to, to them not feeling as individuals you know